Good afternoon. Welcome to the Town of Brookfield uh, Select Board meeting for March 31st, 2023. Please rise. Pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so announcements. Town's 1987 Ford fire truck recently sold at auction for $2,400. Well, um... It went up through Municipid and it was up there for the prescribed period of time. So that's what, there's not a lot of market for a, uh, what does that come out to be? 36 year old fire truck. So. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I mean, you only get what you get for it. And so. All right, sir. Um, uh, let's approve the, uh, just a uh, acknowledgement of the warrants. So we've got uh, FY 2023-19 withholding of 70395 payroll war warrant 2319 196379 and 2319 uh, accounts payable for uh, 3319631. Uh, so moved. Yeah. Second. Yeah. All in favor, aye. 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 All right, so the first topic was the um, social equity policy and host community agreement procedure. Kelly was going to take lead on this, but she's not here, correct? You don't have any paperwork. Well, that's helpful. Um, Mr. Fromm, was that what you're here for to also discuss? Uh, well, I mean, we have this plan. Well, it, so, we, so we have the plan. So the social equity policy and host agreement procedure, um, I think she was just going to brief us on, like, what the steps are with regards to yes, developing better. one. There's, I think it's a, pr the social equity policy, as I understand it, is a prerequisite for establishing a host community agreement because the, there, there has to be a determination of how you offset potential harm to the community and that, that previously, um, like groups that have been previously excluded from potential benefit um, at least have equal or better consideration relative to licensing and uh, creation of the host community agreements, but that's about as far as my knowledge gets. I don't know mm -hmm. if you gentlemen no, are more educated same, on it. Same, same page. Okay, so I guess we'll we'll have to skip that. Yeah, if I may. Yeah. It's not my understanding that it's required, just that it's current best policy. So. Okay. You don't, you don't need it. You don't need the host community agreement to apply for a license. No, the social equity, you don't have to have a social equity policy to establish a host community agreement procedure. They're oh, I got you. Things. I got you two separate things. But that it is considered currently a best practice. Yeah. Um, so can, can you just do me a favor and put an earmark to put that on the Thursday meeting as well then, um, since we don't have Kelly here yes. in order to go over it? And whatever my thought the requirements are, I think we should be able to talk to Mr. Fromm and have yeah. a discussion with him, even if we don't have a. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I think we can have the discussion. I think it does put us a little bit. Um, um, I, I think we have a lot of discussion to have, right? But we're gonna we're gonna start the discussions today about about what our next steps are. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Fromm, you're number two on the agenda. Did you want to come on up and and talk to? You? Um, you know, <laughs> Bring yourself a chair. what aspect of it that, that you had wanted to discuss with us? Okay. All right, so we've been interested in having a conversation about all these communities. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, my involvement in it wouldn't, obviously would not, touch on social equity. 
Right. Well, that's fine. We can still have a discussion yes, around your no, portion so of it. I can so. tell you that um, we're going to enter the cannabis business, marketplace. We're going to vertically integrate, which means we'll have retail. We'll have I'm sorry, is this not enough? Is this that better? Yeah, it's a little better. We'll be cultivating and also manufacturing product. Now, how much of that takes place in Brookfield will be entirely dependent on the vote at town meeting on June 1st. The part that would be able to uh, be established relatively quickly is the retail because one way or the other you have a marijuana overlay district and I'm looking at space within it. So that's not dependent on the vote. What's dependent on the vote is the extent to which our operation takes place and participates in the economy of Brookfield as opposed to some other town. So in other words, the cultivation, the manufacturing could potentially take place in Brookfield if, even if the town does not vote to accept the planning board's amendment. However, it may instead take place in another uh, town. Mm -hmm. So it's only the retail that will certainly uh, be uh, requested for Brookfield. Okay, so at the moment, you, you have specific plans for a retail establishment in Brookfield, and then pending work with the planning board and uh, possible future changes to zoning laws um, that would be uh, considered at annual town meeting. Um, you then may do additional uh, business uh, on cultivation and manufacturing um, contingent on the result of that vote. So Correct, and also we may do it in Brookfield even if the vote goes the other way. Okay. It's possible. Yeah. It just is, yeah, may not be as attractive. Okay. So yeah, maybe not contingent, but you'll make a decision. Um, at, it's like you will not make a decision until after Brookfield has its annual town meeting and considers those zoning bylaw changes. Exactly. Is that fair? And, That's yeah. completely so, accurate. Okay. So, and, and my understanding, and I've only had some informal conversations regarding it, is it sounds like there's been relatively, I want to call it fruitful discussions relative to what the planning board um, is drafting to present to the town? Oh, I think the planning board has done an outstanding job of pulling together an absolutely sterling amendment. It's just a question of whether the town agrees. Okay. Yeah, I so think that's great. Their work in record time. So in, instead of instead of the contention that we've had in, in other instances of, of, of this run up on this, you, mm -hmm. you think we've got good alignment fundamentally between the responsible town entity and and, and yourself? Oh, there's no alignment necessary. As a citizen, I support the amendment. This is needed to be corrected, and it's being corrected. It's yeah. being addressed. Okay. I support it as a citizen. I'm not involved in any effort one way or the other, except that I do attend the meetings and I, I have given input. Okay. I've mostly listened. Okay. And with one or two exceptions, it's been right on, on the money. And I disagree with some of it, and I still support it wholly. I mean, it's a okay. good compromise. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, it, well, and that's a good definition, fundamentally, because usually with a, anything that's Generally, things in government are compromised, yeah. which means nobody's 100% happy with anything. But it's at least a, a reasonable approach to the the state of of the, the the state of the state as we stand today. I couldn't agree more. Okay. If, if, uh, that's great to hear. So thanks for sharing that, because uh, um, I had I had intended to get to some of the discussions and didn't get a chance to. So it's nice to have that feedback from from somebody who's at least been listening and. Sure. Yeah. I will add, just to sum up, it, it needs support. Okay. It, their work needs to be supported. Right. A lot of people have held back in the past, and I understand why. Yeah. But this is the town saying we need a fix, and this is a good fix. Yeah, and I, and I think the I think the, the voters have held back in the past because they they felt that lack of alignment. So yes. I think if it's the planning board bringing it forward and it's a compromise that that'll work for for most, most then yeah. I, I think we'll see a lot more support on the floor. Yeah. Actually, I so because so most people weren't. Um, no, it was contentious. It, it, was, it, it wasn't ideologues voting saying we don't want marijuana. It was people saying this doesn't feel like we've got our ducks in a row, mm -hmm. I think is, is what my impression has been of the conversations up to this point. So um, so it sounds like, and, and forgive me, I should have my notes from the last time that we met formally. Um, we've got the... We've got the bylaws coming. I don't think we're actually in a position to do anything formal about a host.
community agreement until really we've got that bylaw in place unless what's in front of us complies with the current bylaw. What's in front of you would. Okay. This this uh, host community agreement that we're seeking okay. would be identical to a future host community agreement, regardless of the vote, except that there may be an additional host community agreement after the vote if it goes the wrong way. So okay. As far as for retail, it's not going to change. Okay. So I have your business plan. I don't have a copy of the proposed host community agreement. Did that go in through Kelly? Well, um, I don't know. When did, you, when did you? Did you send over a copy of your proposal? I did. Post community agreement? Or did your Kelly lawyer have it? Well, our conversations have been between counsel. I usually just leave oh. it that way until I'm asked a question. Got it. All right. So I don't know that we have a copy of that for review today. So can we go ahead and put that on Thursday's meeting as well? Yeah, and I apologize. Copy of what? Uh, what, whatever, whatever draft where, whatever draft proposal exists currently between the town's council and okay. Mr. Fromm's council relative to the host community agreement. I feel like we're at a disadvantage where we don't have any documentation in front of us. Yeah. Yeah, and I was kind of under the impression we were supposed to be looking at that today. Yeah, but I, I don't have okay. a copy of it, so. I know that uh, this was scheduled originally for Thursday, was it? Yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. Yesterday, yeah. Uh, I don't recall being presented with a host community agreement from either side. Um, not sure where that originates in general. Does it usually come from the town or the town's attorney? And, and I've got to be honest with you, I'm not 100% certain. I think, I, that was part of, I think that was part of what this discussion was supposed to be about, is like, what is our next step relative? Is it that the town needs to draft something? Is it, it you know... No, I was under the impression that right? they would that present that us with something and then we'd start that discussion should, and work yeah, on it. Yeah. We would... Okay. Starting from some sort of boiler plate or template yep. based off of best practices. Okay. So. Well. So I apologize that this is a meeting to set up a meeting, but it's a meeting to set up a meeting. So at least we've aligned that. <laughs> right. I have a question for Mr. Prom. Yeah. Uh, for the uh, proposed retail business on West Main Street, um, do you have an application into the planning board for the, uh, I believe you would need a uh, special permit for that? Um, in that, at that location? Um, I don't no. think they can, there's no, no HCA yet. So it would be oh, so, the, so the, the, H H H H the HCA is a prerequisite for, for the, for, for the uh, planning. Because you okay, need HCA I'm, to then apply, I think, to the cannabis board, <laughs> and then you have to get the cannabis board approval, I think, then to apply for the special permit or vice versa. Oh, that's the order of things. Okay, I, I knew they all needed to be done. I had, must have had the sequencing off. All right, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and we're all just, just at a little bit of a disadvantage. I was going to say, that just price. seems a little, that, that's counterintuitive because I would think that in order to prepare a host community agreement, we would want some of the details that would be in a, an application to the planning board in order for us to evaluate the, the impact. We don't evaluate the impact. So what we do is we come up with the, what's the cost of doing business fundamentally of doing this business in the town of Brookfield? Like that's what the host community agreement is. is okay, that, so it's, it's sort of like, that, a, it, it identifies mit, um, mitigate, maybe mitigations that might be needed um, that aren't, don't fall on the planning boards realm, like things like, because many would consider traffic and noise, and so that well, would we not consider be traffic and noise. We consider compensation back to the town for the potential increase in negative social consequences of having a, a, a retail marijuana facility within the confines of the town. Okay, right. and that, that's so the purpose of the HCA. That's the purpose of the HCA. So it's okay, basically yeah, so. compensation to the town for any potential risk of social harm, whether it's a case of more occasions for police calls, you know, traffic stops, mm -hmm. you know, in some instances, you know, um, you know, other types of health considerations within the community. I mean. Okay. I, I, I just, I'm trying to wrap my head around our ability to really evaluate that without, it's like, without the specifics that would be in a planning board proposal, but <clears throat> I don't control the process. I just have to help us work through it. Right, exactly. Okay, so thank you. The, the host community 
portion comes first. Mm -hmm. and you need it to. It's it's you know step one on the road to mm -hmm. the facility happening. So, okay. Um, so um, can you also just take a note to ask Kelly to reach out to KP to see if we already have something in in works yeah. and and to get a draft distributed prior to the meeting and if we don't have one um, let's determine if portions of that need to be yeah so let's just figure out what we've got in terms of like how far along we are in the in, in the physical confines of it um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we can cover today without having that in front of us did you gentlemen have any questions for? For him, no. No, okay. Not at this point. I don't have any more questions. Okay. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so uh, Ryan, I see you're here. Can we move on to the ARPA funds discussion? Sir, welcome. How you doing? Good again. So, What's, what's the word? What do you need? So um, I think we're just going to go over what, what we're going to need for ARPA funds coming up for... Yeah, I don't have anything. What's that? Uh, Central Street, Rice Corner, um, Crossroad Culvert, which is contingent on if we receive the grant, and then um, also Green Street. So I'll start with Green Street. That's a big question because <clears throat> we're so close to receiving bids. We're about three weeks away. I think what was discussed was maybe the putting forward the 10% contingency on that, which was 53,600. Um, this question, though, if if we're gonna where the bids come in, if we have enough money to just do all the work with the contingency through the grant money, we would do that, obviously. Okay. Um, Hard to say. The prices have increased since we um, started down the road of putting in this grant. So, okay. And then um, Rice Corner Crossroad Culvert. That grant has been submitted successfully. It was due today. We put it in Wednesday. Um, that one, if we receive the grant, we'd probably be looking at about eighty-one thousand required on top of the. So the the grants for four hundred. And we need about 81 on top of that to complete the work. Does the 81 include any amount for contingency? Or yeah, no? that's a, that's a contingency, and then 25,000 towards um, what do we call it? Um, basically, a study on the other two locations on that grant application. So there's the Rice Corner Crossroad Culvert for construction. That's 400,000, and then Gay Road and Lake Road are all along the same stream and there's two other culverts there that we're trying to align ourselves so that we can move forward once this one's done and receive grants for the other two. So we'd be putting 25,000 towards um, the engineering. Engineering. Animation. Yeah, it, it's called, um, it's basically what you need to do before you can even engineer it. Okay. Um, so it's like the environmental impacts. To exactly, the yes. Yep. Okay. So that that's where those that's what that amount of money would cover, and then Central Street we're looking at probably about one hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars to finish this year. And it was listed on the agenda as ARPA funding. So are we saying that we be we need this is ARPA money? Okay. Yeah. So. Um, and all of those are eligible for, for that funding. Yes. Do we have a timeline by which we have to ex, uh, expend those funds or? For ARPA? Yeah. Uh, I think the ARPA money is good for another year or two. I'm not positive on that. Um, Kathy knows that or Kelly, yeah. I what, believe. What will that leave in terms of ARPA funds if all of those are approved? In, as a whole for the yeah. town I don't know what's available at this point okay I don't know that number can you ask Kelly to get with the or maybe yeah. you can get get with uh, Kathy and possibly um, Lori to see where 
if all of these things are approved and funded, where it's going to leave us in terms of our ARP funds. Okay. Any other questions, gentlemen? Um, Ryan, the, yeah. for Green Street, yeah. the uh, money is due to um, we, uh, the 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 ARPA money is needed because we have a uh, we have money set aside through grants or other mechanisms for the project, but the bids are going to come in the quotes are going to come in higher than the money we had set aside, so to speak, because prices have been going up. Yeah, okay, that, that's very possible. All right, and so therefore, I think the intention here is that we could. At annual town meeting, the uh, town could vote to apply free cash to cover that Green Street money and therefore de -alloc make that ARPA money available for other things instead. We're not committing it. We're, ju we're just saying we can spend the ARPA money uh, in order to allow the project to go forward. Okay. Um, for Central Street, um, why do we need more money? Well, I, I do believe that the ARPA funds were already earmarked for Central, partially earmarked for Central Street. When we, identified the, when we identified the shortfall at the start of the project, yeah. so the, the grants were written like almost two years ago to mm -hmm. get the money. Well, there was such a, a increase in materials and labor costs from the time that the bids that were used to submit the grants occurred that by the time the final bids came in for actually commencing the work, the lowest one was still higher than what had been allocated across the two grants. Okay. So the ARPA money was identified, gosh, over a year ago as being yeah. the funding source for the shortfall. Okay. I think at the time we knew it was going to be somewhere between 150 and 200 and didn't know where it was going to land. Right. Okay, and we so had that discussion in open meeting. Okay. And, and now we're just at the point where we know how to vote the number. And now we need to vote the number. We're, we're narrowing down. And another thing is, is the asphalt price. So we're going to use some of the money to finish pave our, the street, which is outside of the contract. We're going to do that ourselves as the town. And those asphalt prices move from escalation in the contract. So um, where it's going to land when they do the paving could be a little less or a little more. Mm -hmm. So that number is could change slightly for the better even. I don't know. I don't know what your, this year's number is yet because no one's paving yet. Mm -hmm. And then for West Corner Crossroad, yeah. is it, uh, you said a culvert, is it just a culvert or is there, I, I remember at one point we talked about more work there, uh, some, the road being degraded due to some new construction going in on that road, so. Yeah, it, no, it's a full culvert replacement with, I mean, they're gonna redirect the water. It, it's a pretty involved project. Okay, so they're, they're, re they're redirecting water flow, not just putting a, replacing a culvert under the road. They are redirecting the water temporarily during the, the construction and then rerouting it back under the new culvert. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's a big culvert, too. It's uh, 110 feet by, uh, I think the new box is about 8 feet wide. Mm -hmm. So it's it's good size. Okay. That's big. Yeah. I can't buy it. Good squatters. Yeah, you can <laughs> walk through it <laughs> once all done. Standing up. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're it's eight feet tall? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it's it's huge. It's That's, eight foot I, I was going to say, I, I didn't quite, I don't go into culverts very often, yeah. so. <laughs> the, the, Not since the, I was eight years old. <laughs> the precast culvert itself costs about 140000 That's the material cost, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's heavy duty. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what do you need from us? A vote for each of those amounts for each of those projects? Well, <clears throat> I'd like to defer the Green Street one until we receive bids. Okay, well, that's if fine. If that's possible. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think we can do these as we go and as it's appropriate, right? Yep. So. And then the, the rice corner culvert, let's defer that until we find out if we got the grant, because if we don't get the grant, that's off the table. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so really the only one you need to vote for today is the Central Street for $188,000. Correct, yep. With, the, with, the, with it being for our awareness that there's another Hundred and thirty thousand dollars, hundred and thirty five thousand out there that's nominally yes. earmarked. And that's why I would like to know how much else we've got left and what our timeline is for spending it so that we can properly identify what to do with it. 
And, and you said that that can still fluctuate here with Central Street because of the yeah, asphalt? Yeah, on the date of the actual paving, when yeah. we actually buy the material is when our price is locked. Yeah. So I don't know if we should, do we want to vote on it now or do we want to defer? If, it? if we do the 188, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to cover us. Okay. As long as, you know. So why don't we, I, I actually have a recommendation. Let's vote it um, not to exceed 197, which I'm would be 5% over what he's asking for. And then. So that way if it's less, if it's, it's less, only. It's, it's, then they can just pay it and be done with it. And we don't have to vote it a second time. I'm good with that. So uh, can I get a motion to that effect? Yeah, but we don't know how much ARPA money is remaining, do we? Or do we have a ballpark? Uh, we can just phrase the motion that, with the proviso that, provided it doesn't exceed the remaining ARPA money that we're authorizing up to 197000 of the existing funds to be allocated to the Central mm -hmm. Street project. I mean, what other uses do we have for the ARPA money? It's just my... My understanding is that I know, I know this needs to be funded, but the question becomes, what do we, what, what are we for going, how much more ARPA money do we have? Well, I don't dispute that. That was one of my questions yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we had discussions. Yeah, we, we, we previously we had a discussion that money, said we were going to spend ARPA money on the gap between okay. the, the grants and, and what so the quotes were coming in. So it's it's a little bit disingenuous yes. to a year after we make the original vote say, hey, now we're not going to spend that money. We're going to have to wait to finish the project until we can take it to town meeting to get $190,000 from some other funding source to complete a project that we're looking at completing in the next, what, like mm -hmm. two months? Or less. Or less. Okay. It's, so I, 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 see, I see a point. It's just, yeah. With the, and that's why not to vote the other two is so that we can understand how much ARPA money is there, what our other options are for spending it. There's some very specific constraints regarding the projects that can be funded through the ARPA money. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are related to things like roads, water, and yeah. what have you. And so the Central Street Project incorporated both road and water. Mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why we do yeah. it. Culverts is another big one that yeah. they like to see the money spent on, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, um, okay. so yeah, I, I mean, you can feel yeah. free to vote no, but yeah. let's I, at least get a motion yeah. on the yeah. floor. You have the motion. Okay. Second. Uh, second. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Can you word that a little bit more clear? Okay. So the motion, the motion that I had proposed that he said so moved to was that I made a motion to for us to authorize the expenditure of up to one hundred and ninety-seven thousand yeah. dollars, not to exceed, right. uh, in support of the uh, Central Street project completion from ARPA funds. From ARPA funds. So, and then, as, and we got a so moved against that proposal, so. All right, anything else that we need to cover while you've got our attention relative to these projects? Because no, it's on that's, the that's it for the, the okay. yeah, for the ARPA. Great, awesome. All right. Thank Are you. any of the other well, things on your, uh, on the, on the uh, agenda yours for your groups? Nope. Is the vacation carryover? No, I think that was out. Oh. Okay. And actually, Mike Duvall is. Yeah, he added that in um, when they started on the agenda. Um, okay. Came up up to two weeks. I, usually, we allow that amount, so I'm not as concerned about it. So, all right. So let's hit um, dugout repair. Moves field. So can I get a motion to approve um, that the um, that we authorize the rec committee to commence with um, rebuild of the dugouts at Lewis Field? Do we have a cost for this? I never saw anything in I there. I think it's within their budget. 
I mean, they basically they've already paid for materials. Uh -huh. I don't know if it was don't. I suspect so the it was labor donated. Is donated. Okay. The labor is donated. The plan is established. Yeah. And I mean, I, are they are we allocating money? Or are we just authorizing them no. to spend their money? No, we're yeah. authorizing them to go get a permit because we technically own Lewis Field. Oh, okay. That's so you can't get that. You can't get the permit to do the construction without having authorization of the property okay. owner. So this is not a financial authorization. This is a you may do this work yes. with the budget you've already yes. been authorized. Yes, because it's, I mean, this is both property and we're the executive branch of the town. <laughs> Got it. I move that we um, vote to uh, permit the uh, recreation committee to uh, rebuild the baseball field dugouts at Lewis Field. All right. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 All right. Now, how do they, does someone have to sign off for that? Or no, they just I, look at the I, think, I think what, just, just, just tell Jeff, send it yeah, okay. just tell them and Jeff, send Jeff a note directly, please. So, uh, we've got a note from the chief of police to declare uh, cruiser number three a surplus so that it can be traded in with the purchase of their new cruiser that was voted at the last town meeting. Can I get a motion for that specific uh, VIN number to be declared surplus? Yeah, I move that we uh, declare the um, cruiser number three, the 2515 Ford Explorer VIN 1 Foxtrot Michael 5 Kilo 8 Alpha Romeo X-Ray Foxtrot Golf Bravo 61835 as surplus. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so next we need to cancel the state of emergency that was declared back in April 2nd of 2020. So, can I get a motion to that effect? Uh, make a motion for the cancellation of the state of emergency vote dated 4 2 20. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, vacation carryovers. We have two requests. One of them was from Al Jones. Um, he's requesting to carry over one week into FY 2024. And then we've got Mr. Duval who's asking to carry over two weeks from 2023 into 2024. Now, one of the things that um, I don't know if we ever voted it, but we said it's kind of a guideline and published to the department heads in, in with the last uh, iteration of this board was that there was a time when people were carrying over actually more than they earned in a year. And so we established, and I don't remember what guideline we put into place, but I think you couldn't carry over more than what you earned in a year. And that for people that had, who, who had that much, we had set targets for them to like, reduce it to like you know mm -hmm. at least a week a year every year there too for the ones that were like way up at that max mm -hmm. so and that's why you only have a couple because we used to have a whole slew of them every right year. we used to have a whole slew of them every year and and actually if i remember correctly mike duvall had like four weeks starting this year and he's got it down to two so he's actually complying with the yeah. targets he's, that we set yep and i don't recognize the name is he on the highway department he's on the highway department okay yep and i remember that that's one of the places where we had a lot of accumulated vacation we did okay so yeah so um, if, he's, if he's working it down then it makes sense to yeah he's, he complied he complied with the target if i remember mm -hmm. correctly because i think he had four weeks and we asked him to get it to two mm -hmm. by this year so um at least as i remember it if somebody wants to say i'm inaccurate in that they're welcome to go check the minutes but that's the best i recall of it mm -hmm. so um, so can I get a motion regarding approval of these? All right, I vote that we uh, approve the uh, vacation carryover requests. Um, Al Jones, one week, and Mike Duvall, two weeks. Uh, carryover from fiscal year 23, it's from 23 to 24, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Carryover their vacation from fiscal year 23 into fiscal year 24. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So um, let's see here, we've got minutes to approve. Um, yeah, and these were previously said. There's a couple that you guys saw privately, the those executive sessions that yep. so. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Do you all have an uh, opportunity to review them um, during the advanced mailing on those? 
Yes. All right. So can I get a motion for? Make a motion to approve these select board minutes for 3923, 316, 23, two sets, 321, 23, 620, 17, 924, 14, two sets. All right. I have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so now we are to the budget discussion. Is what's in the deck updated with with um, some of the math that Kelly had talked have, about? If I remember correctly, last time, uh, no, I have only the sheets that I have available, which are basically the same things as we received last time. Okay. I don't have a new update sheet. I never, I just don't have one. Did Kelly send us anything via email? She sent us something a week or two ago. I was, I was looking at it. I didn't get a chance to dig into it. I didn't get a but chance to look at it like holistically. I mean, I'm just. Just looking at what's in front of us, there seem to be there are a number of line items that do not have uh, numbers plugged in for the uh, select board recommendation in 24. I mean, maybe that's because she's just um, waiting on us to decide I something. I think it's still being worked but on. Then again, no, a lot of these numbers we haven't discussed, so I just found this, though. can't be waiting on us. Oh, the host procedure is right there. Crap. Money's gone already. The board, yeah. Did we find some new information on the yeah, uh, marijuana process? Yeah. Probably should have been in the packet. Yeah, it should have been in the packet. And that's fine. We, I mean, we need to. Uh, there's actually some back and forth. Um, let's see what she may have sent. When I asked that we be sure to include this on the agenda, I was expecting to have Kelly on hand to be able to answer some questions. Oh, relative to the budget? Yes. So I don't know what we, I, don't, I mean, I mean, a couple things. Looking at the budget she sent us. Um, yeah, the budget she sent us has a, uh, proposed recommended number for us on the elementary school that is different than what was requested by the school board. And I would like to understand that. I'm sorry, you're saying that the budget for the... In, she, she's, uh, maybe, maybe she only sent it to me, but she sent an unlocked copy of her budget spreadsheet to me. Okay. And 
in that spreadsheet on the elementary school expenses, the, um, the, she has the school board's request for 3.57 million. And then in the column for our recommendation, she has a different lower number. And so I would like to understand what that number is intended to represent. Ooh, okay. Okay, she did mm -hmm. actually send, yeah, she sent it out on the 17th, actually. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's, so what we have currently, budget requested, yeah, and fundamentally, and the copy that she sent out didn't really have the columns for like what our recommendation was and the, mm -hmm. and the like. So, um, but you're saying that what was sent also has a different value for the school? For the elementary school, but mine item, yes. By how much? Mm, not insignificant. Um, I can tell you it is about 22,000, if I read this right. There are no commas in here. Oh, yeah, it looks like it had last year's number still in there. So I think that's just a case of not getting this year's number in there. She may have sent an older copy. Mm, maybe, but the number I'm looking at is different than last year's request. And I think we approved what they requested last year without modification on the floor. Well, school budgets, I don't know that we have any room to modify it on the floor. No. Um, we, the, town has, the town has the right to change the amount allocated to the school. The town is not able to go into the budget and move around the line items that make up the total, but the town does have the right to change the total funding of the school, is my understanding. Yeah, I remember that. It's like, and that's for the elementary school. For the uh, for the uh, Tantasqua district, it's a little different in that if we're the only town not to fully fund our assessment, we get charged our full assessment. We need one or two other towns to join us in saying no. in rejecting the assessment, and then that opens things up. I don't know exactly what happens when it goes there. It's never happened while I've been here. Whereas the town of the school, school, I remember the curriculum coordinator was a big thing probably 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so people didn't want the cur right. curriculum. Right, so they were going to unfund the budget by 50000 Right, but then but it's up to the school what to do. Yeah. What to do. Yeah, then the school yeah. could take the hit somewhere else and preserve that position. Right. Yeah, I think it's intended to prevent people from meddling too deep or from overly micromanaging the school right. might be the right term. And so, and it's like, it is what it is. My understanding is that's state law. I've heard from multiple sources that it's been cited that way. Yeah. And so the town does have the uh, right to, change, to to fund the school however much it thinks it should be funded. Yeah. Okay, so from a standpoint of overall selectman recommendations, what approach do y'all want to take regarding getting through and getting our recommendations in there if there's any explicit changes or concerns that you're looking to see? Uh, let's see. Um, in general, I, I think I'm going to need a little more time to dig through the budget. I put some time in this morning uh, while a conference call, I had a conference call I didn't need to participate in, and I've identified a couple things for attention and further questions, and others are like, yeah, it looks like they're level funding. It's, that's, I'm okay with that. I don't anticipate any questions there. Okay. But I mean, I, I, would, I, think, I think I would like a chance to talk to Kelly. I may make some time to uh, make an arrangements to talk to her directly during the week next week. Okay. Just to uh, keep those questions out of the meeting. And if anyone else has a question, we can go over, we can, at least I'm not raising things and asking more quite too many more questions well and and i think it would be good i mean i'd be happy to have you spend some time just sit down with kelly and go through line by line mm -hmm. um i will send a note back to her um saying hey it looks like there were some discrepancies right with the budget mm -hmm. that she sent over first that was the adjustable budget i mean i don't mind going back in and hand punching the stuff that's that's a little bit off 
um, and taking a look at what it what it means. Has advisory gone through and made any? Ad advisory is going through and making. So they're not finished. Yet. Not, they're not finished, and they are as oh, we, we have them for the advisory committee here. So rather than saying what I what I heard from uh, the conversation with another member, um, yeah, he can bring up what he wants. But I know they they're identifying some. I understand they're identifying some concerns, or they're. They have some concerns and they're making recommendations accordingly, might be a better way to put it. Mr. Banish, did you have any input regarding any concerns that y'all have identified? Regarding the budget? Yeah. Um, first question is uh time email from Mark Oh, and, uh, Could you come up over here? Okay, my first question is regarding an email from the town administrator, March 8th, uh, standing select board voted a tentative 3% payroll increase. Has that number changed? Or is it still 3%? 3%. 3%. Three, yeah, 3%. 3%. Okay. Um, Brad, are you on the uh, trustees of the library? Yes. Okay. Um, I guess there's some changes being made at the library. You're talking about having an, an assistant director now. Say that again about not having it? No, talking about having an assistant director. Right. Correct. With a commensurate salary increase. Correct. So how does that break down in the budget? Um, we have a request to upgrade the library director's salary from 56,742 to 70,500. That's almost a $14,000 increase. And the other salary line item, I believe is supposed to cover two individuals. Is that correct? Or is that one individual? The it's, custodian was two individuals. No, I'm sorry, no. Not the custodian, the library assistant salary. That is one individual, I believe. That's one individual. And the request is to raise that individual salary from 57000 to 65000 yeah. Are you sure about that? I, that's the only other wages. I mean, there's director, custodian, and then assistant wages. I would think the assistant wages line item includes all the other librarians that work there. Um, specifically, I'm thinking of Julia and um, Kate Simpson. And I think Holly Simpson has helped also, and I suspect there are one or two others. My wife generally takes the kids to the library. I might not have anything on with it. So, I mean, Marty, just look, looking at the structure of the accounts, my expectation is that everyone other than Brenda and the custodians are handled under, would be handled under the library assistant wages. Um, also, just thinking about it, I don't, it doesn't make sense to have, an, a, that doesn't make sense as an assistant director level wage. Well, and that's what I'm asking. Is there supposed to be a new line item for an assistant director wage? <clears throat> I, I would think that I don't would know be an that accounting for yeah, I don't know that they're supposed to be. It's like they can fund it. They can fund it through the existing line item or they can fund it through a new line item. And it looks like they're proposing to fund that, inc uh, fund that increase slash change in position through the existing line item. Okay, so what has the Board of Selectmen approved regarding the fiscal year 24 budget increase? The Board of Selectmen has not made any recommendations on the library budget to date. Okay. Yeah, it? I know you were, you, you were going to... Yeah, and I don't have any, and, and I, that, I met with them, that. and I have the information, I just didn't bring it with me. Okay. Can we get that on the agenda for yeah. next week? Yeah. So let's know. explicitly put the discussion around the library budget on the next agenda. What's the date of the next uh, slip board meeting? Next, next Thursday. Thursday. Next Thursday. It's that is. regularly scheduled first Thursday of the month. Okay. Um, we had a question regarding Tree Warden. When did we um, use this person or start using this new person as a Tree Warden? December or January. Okay. Yeah, December. it was shortly after Brad and I joined the board. Okay. Because Ryan's made it clear that he has no problem with assuming the duties of the Tree Warden, so why did we change? 
Because he was actually certified as a tree warden, and Brian is not. Yeah. He's actually since he's delivered. A, uh, he's actually since delivered a very comprehensive tree plan to the town. I, I believe. And I think he's in the in the process of getting some quotes out so that we can actually get the work done. Because to date, with all of the different priorities that the highway department has, it hasn't necessarily been their top priority, and he's been able to just focus on that. Yeah. Um, Marty, what's the nature of your concern about who we appoint as tree warden? Um, well, my concern started when we got the um, budget request for tree warden. Mm -hmm. um, items like stump removal at $250 per stump. Uh, I don't know how you quote a flat rate for that because anybody who grinds stumps well, when you do it according to a well, when you, do it well, you can actually contract. You can get a, I've had contracted rates for that. Yep. Um, what really uh, I started wondering about was tree planting at $600 per tree. I mean, I can plant trees for $20. I mean, I don't, unless that is well, including the cost of the tree. I mean, that seems that exorbitant. Was, I'm assuming that's the cost of the tree itself because the trees are expensive. The actual tree? Well, I guess it all depends on what size you buy them. I mean, I've, I've put in 20 yeah. fruit trees over the past yeah. two years. And, I've never spent six hundred dollars yeah. on a tree. I don't, is it detailed to what he's purchasing, or no? It's not. A uh, tree removal eighteen hundred dollars a day. Let's choose a qualified tree warden and the training course. Um, if he's already certified, why are we we, we did agree as part of designating him as our tree warden to pay for his certification course. No. Okay, so he's not certified. He is no. certified, but to no. maintain your certification should, requires additional okay. training and, and certification. And I think the thought is, uh, given the high value that he is uh, giving to the town for bringing his certifications here, that it was a uh, it was reasonable for us to pay for him to maintain his certifications and therefore as part of the agreement that we would then enjoy the benefit of his skills and certification. Okay. Um, but as far as his submitted budget, those are just estimates regarding what the removals are going to be. So do we approve that amount because we've already got, uh, what is it, 50 or $60,000 allocated for tree removal from, from an annual town meeting? Yeah, I believe that money is, out, is specifically allocated for tree removal, and so therefore that wouldn't cover the uh, the new trees. Um, there is a line item in the budget for tree warden, which would cover just about anything like tree tree removal and addition of trees. Yeah, so f like f the forty thousand dollar article was explicit to tree removal. So any follow-on activity like stump, well, I guess the stump grinding you could probably fall under tree removal. I would think you could. So. Um, but the, the, the number of, of problem trees that we have, right, um, is really significant in this town. And, and like I said, Ryan's team just hasn't had the bandwidth to do it. The quotes that the tree warden is providing includes the, the brush cleanup and the traffic control, which historically our highway department has provided. So it is nearly twice the daily rate of what we've paid in the past, but we haven't been able to staff adequately to execute enough days to actually deal with our tree backlog. So if we want to, you know, address the fact that we have a significant backlog of unsafe trees in this town, um, yeah, we could spend through the other money first, but if we spend through halfway through this next year and we haven't planned, budgeted, and allocated for, for what we need past that, then we'll, want, we'll wind up at a, at a stop work fairly quickly at, at the uh, $1,800 a day plus the, plus the stump grinding. So is the tree warden an employee of the town? He no. is a volunteer. 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 Okay. That's right. There's no salary line item. Correct. Right. In the request. And then we're funding the license uh, renewal through the tree warden line item. Yeah. Okay. So do you have it? Uh, how many... In, in that budget, you mentioned six hundred dollars for a uh, for a tree installation. Um, how many trees? How many trees are proposed in that budget? Three. Okay. It, it, it's extended to eighteen hundred dollars. Oh, I'm sorry. That was twenty three. Twenty four is twenty four hundred dollars for trees. Okay. Thank you. Now there is a commission here for or a committee for fruit trees or shade, trees. shade, shade trees. trees. And who's on that commission? 
I don't think anybody's currently. I think, isn't Michelle Clark just Michelle Michelle Clark. Uh, Yeah, that might be. That's, right. the, that's the only person I know who's no. on that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there are others. I can, I can look it up when I get in my office and give it Oh, that's, yeah, that's not necessary. But I did volunteer to Michelle that if she needs shade trees planted, I'm, I'm certainly capable and willing to do the work and volunteer to do that work. Okay. Um, I don't have any more questions, bunch of questions on the top of my head. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mike. All right, so I think what we need to do is commit to doing our homework, I guess, for the next meeting. For, 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 for next Thursday, yeah. yeah. That's um, do you think you'll be able to get in with Kelly between now and then? Depends on if she's I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to make the time. I'll, I'll reach out to her by email and see what her schedule is. I, okay. I, I'm generally flexible, so I'm sure we can find a time where we both line up. Okay. So it seems like the only real big concern of any of the items so far is just the library. That's all I heard from Marty, and yeah. you know some questions around the. I tree. mean, the library, the impact of the of the elementary school on the budget. I think I plugged in the I plugged in the Tantasca number, and I don't think it raised the flag for me. Tantasco is going up. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong line. Tantasco is going up 5.6 percent, but to a certain extent, that's like insurance. Yeah. We don't have a lot of leverage over or control over that expense. Yeah. We have elected, we have elected school board representatives that represent us there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, and I'll probably I'll work with Kelly because there are a couple of. Um, analysis details I'd like to see added to this, like particularly online items, how much each is going up. And I'm going to try and create a, a summary, a little dashboard that I used when I was on advisory committee. I don't know if you want to put the letter. I have a copy of the letter that Clarence gave you because it was all sealed. Yeah, and I meant, to, I meant to bring it with me, and I didn't. We can, or I can just give everybody the highlight on it. So. We're, are we done with the budget discussion pretty much at this point? I think we're, I'm done. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I did get a correspondence. Um, um, I had intended to bring it and I managed to leave it on my kitchen table, so apologies. But fundamentally it was, um, it was a CC of a letter to our Board of Health. I guess historically speaking, because the Congregational Church um, is a non-profit and um, you know, kind of some of the partnerships that we've had in between the town and um, and the church that we haven't historically charged them the $125 food service fee mm -hmm. in order to permit their kitchen. <coughs> so, and apparently the Board of Health expressed a unwillingness to waive the fee this year, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which is within their purview. Mm -hmm. Right, it's within their purview. There's no obligation for us to waive the fee, um, but but he did express some significant disappointment given you know the fact that like uh, just for instance they're currently hosting you know our monthly senior meetings at no cost. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, there's a, a number of other you know community events that they support pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, you know, I was actually at the Board of Health meeting where that was discussed. Yeah, and, and he in particular expressed a disappointment that they weren't even invited as a courtesy, like let know that it would be on the agenda mm -hmm. expressly. Um, so, and uh, you were at the meeting. Well, so I, was, I was at the meeting. They, the, what I recall of the discussion was that they, uh, as a group, they did not recall uh, a history of granting that exception, okay. which I think... Um, was part of their decision making. Okay. And also what they said was that um, other similar groups do not um, get, uh, uh, other churches don't get waivers like that, okay. which are nonprofit. Though I don't, the, the, dis the discussion did not come up around any of the, any of the community involvement that uh, the, the, the other churches may or may not have. Yeah. So I, I think uh, uh, Clarence's letter uh, does brings up some information that I'm not sure the Board of Health was aware of. Right. And so it's 
it's their decision. Yeah, it, it is their decision. I mean, one of the things that uh, I wanted our board to potentially consider um, would be to put, maybe approach the council on the aging um, and include in their next year's budget basically some monthly fee for let, actually lending the hall. Because most other groups within the town, like I know I've organized stuff over at the church, and, mm -hmm. and typically, while they won't invoice us, mm -hmm. there was a, there was some sort of donation involved for use of the space. It was kind of like mm -hmm. pay what's a, you know what your your group feels is appropriate mm -hmm. fundamentally. Yeah. Um, so my proposal was going to to be that we should look at what a reasonable compensation is for the support that they're currently giving in terms of, of authorizing the space for the seniors and, and ask the church to invoice us in a, an appropriate amount for the fact that they have the cleanup and stuff associated with you know hosting the monthly yeah I mean senior if, if, if they're expecting other community groups to do so I, I think it's not I think it's reasonable for, yeah. for us I mean, to, I mean, to his, do that too his, historically there's been that handshake of they don't charge us we don't charge them mm -hmm. but if we're not going to live up to that half of the handshake then then it's something that I think we need yeah. to consider and I budget think, yeah. for. We, we can consider. I, I'd, I'd like to see if um, you know, give Clarence a chance to uh, to talk to the board directly and um, and explain there the his, what his he the sees as the history. Health, I'm sorry. Yes, the board of health specifically, yeah. and uh, to see if they would uh, reconsider their their thought and point out some of the other things they may not have considered. Yeah. And if they if they can't come to an arrangement, then we can think about what we can do. Yeah. Because so. I mean, if they if they can work it out themselves, it's like I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, but I just wanted to make you all aware of it. All right, thank you. So just because I had gotten a gotten a copy to me. No, I've have done plenty. I've done plenty of events at the church through Cub Scouts, and so I know, yeah. I know what it's like. Yep. So all right. All right so and then uh, last thing on our agenda is to go into executive session under. Um, Exemption two, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel relative to the police chief contract. Can I get a motion to that effect? Do you have time? Do you want to? We can be quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. We yeah. can just go in the kitchen. Yeah. We can okay. run in the kitchen yeah. while people yeah. are packing up. Yep. Yeah. You, you, you have that motion. The language? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, we, this one we have to. This one we have <laughs> oh, to. Oh, you're to giving it to me for some yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I move to enter executive session under exemption number two to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-personnel police chief contract and not to reconvene an open session. Roll call vote. Wait. Second. All, right. All in favor, Coughlin, aye. Kodowski, aye. Regan, aye. All right. That's a wrap. Thank you all. All right.